am Nancy Goddess, and I'm your host tonight for Big Beautiful Women and Men Who Love You. I love the way they decorated, you know, the, the colors here, sort of so um, sweet. And, did a and, and you know, I didn't job. bring my big girl statue <laughs> because it was so hot. You know, I have a lot of big girl no, statues. No, I know, I know, I know. I didn't bring I was afraid I was going to break it. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a little so bit it's crowded here. today, and like I said, goddesses is for big, beautiful people meaning men and women, and their admirers and friends. So it's, we don't discriminate no. at all. No. At all. So that's very, very important. And I think I'm going to switch glasses. All right. And I'm taking off the blue. And <laughs> ask the viewers which one they yeah, like I on you. which one is better. The blue is funky. Well, what happens, You it, it matches with the uh, that heart, that stone. Oh, the blue, yes. And Again, you're watching Goddesses. Thank you for watching. And if there's anything that you would like to do. Did you hear it? Do you want to uh, show his video, Dan Oliver? Yeah, Oliverio? I saw that. I saw that. Do you want to up. see his video yeah. before he I would, calls? You know what? Let me put up his book, number one. The Round World, Life at the Intersection of Love, Sex, and Love, sex, and fat. Over here, Nancy. Nancy. Over here. Oh. I, you know, I thought it was this one right No, here, I know. For some reason. I know. But anyway, this is Dan Olivero's book. And he's such a lovely person. So we're going to roll in okay. a little something about him. If you turn him. the book around, we'll be able to see him. Oh. There's a oh, picture this of him. him. Yeah. Oh, he's got, a, he's got a nice body, though, but he's very smart. I see that. Mm -hmm. I mean, his body is great, but he's he's very personable. Mm -hmm. He's a, he will make anybody feel comfortable. Feel comfortable mm -hmm. on who they are. Yes. He's a very nice person. So mm -hmm. when he calls in later, after mm -hmm. the roll in, mm -hmm. you're gonna see. You can even ask some questions. Oh, I will. Oh, there, there he go. There we go. Welcome to the new book by Dan Oliverio, The Round World. Dan, you talk about some things in this book mm. that most people will never have in an everyday conversation. <laughs> Tell us indeed. about it. Yeah, well, The Round World is about what it's like to have an attraction to obese partners and what it's like to be someone who's obese who uh, you're now attractive for something that you may not find attractive about yourself. And I call it The Round World because The Round World is the place where these interactions happen. There's an enormous quantity of men and women who would seek out an obese partner. And of course, there are plenty of obese partners to be had, and but not all of them necessarily want to be valued for that. And so I talk about what that's like, and I talk about the difference between, between being objectified and being adored, or being sought for a quality that you don't necessarily like about yourself. And these are tricky things to negotiate. So what kind of reactions are you getting? Because this is a very interesting topic that people, as I said, really don't hear much about. Yeah, because, you know, there's a lot of shame and guilt on both sides. You know, we often talk about, you know, uh, you know, obese people, fat people, they're like, they feel bad about themselves or they feel guilty for being the size they are, and not all the time. That's certainly not true of all fat people. But there's, a, there's that thing that goes around. What people don't realize is that for chubby chasers like myself, we often go through a similar problem with self-esteem and guilt, and it comes from the same source, the idea that being fat is not being good enough. And I'm here to say that's not necessarily the case. So the reactions I get are varied. We have some, you know, some people are like, you know, yes, finally. And, you know, I had one guy come up to me after a seminar and he said, I think you just changed my life. And, you know, less than a year later, he was engaged to be married, where he thought previously there was no opportunity for a relationship, you know, because he was a middle-aged fat man who sort of resigned himself to being single. You know, The Round World is the first book that really looks at our relationships, not from someone who's obese, but from someone who finds obesity attractive. And we tend to find it attractive in two different ways. Chubby Chasers, as I speak about in the book, we really see obesity as either beautiful or powerful. And some of us uh, are really, you know, if you think about muscle, which is often attractive to people, like not necessarily even bodybuilders, but just someone who's muscular. Some people love the power of that, and some people like the beauty of that. Well, it's often the same with fat, that people gravitate to the beauty of fat, of roles, of the walk of a fat person. And some people are into the power of that, and the weight, and the gravity that it gives the person. And it's just a different way of looking at the world. It's a different way of looking at, uh, at how we identify ourselves and other people. 
So, Nancy, wow, we're back. that was lovely. He, well, I met him in much. person, and I was so wonderful. Oh, oh my goodness. Hello, Dan. Hi, Dan. Hi there. We were just showing your video. Well, great. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm okay, except my feet are a little bit swollen from Las Vegas. Oh, but wow. uh, I'll have to just elevate them a little bit and drink a lot of water and cut the salt. <laughs> but I'm doing good, and I'm happy to hear you. I really would love to have the viewers see you, but they did get a chance to see you with your video. And with me, I have Matilda. Hi, Dan. Hi, Matilda. Okay. Dan, I was looking through the... Um, because I didn't get to read the book. So I was look looking at the content area. And you speak about attraction, and you also speak about uh, weight as power. Uh, can you address that a little bit? Uh, can you expand on that topic, weight as beauty and also as power? Yeah. So, you know, a lot of times I get the question, and a lot of chubby chasers or fat admirers get the question, well, yes. what do you like about fat, or what do you see that other people don't see? Mm -hmm. And what it is that we see is we see a form or a shape or a person who is even more beautiful than what we see in in the rest of our lives, or even more powerful. We tend to see fat as either a, a connotation of beauty or as power. And some of us line up more for the beauty and some of us line up more for the power. So if you can think of, you know, images of feminine or masculine power, because, you know, a lot of times we think of fat admirers or guys who like fat as, as guys. And, you know, there are a lot of women who prefer a fat partner. So if you're looking for, you know, a feminine power, you might look at, you know, there are images online of, like, Fat Wonder Woman. Or you might look at, you know, the German barmaid who can carry 12 steins of beer during Oktoberfest. Or you might look at the Wagnerian soprano. Um, and we have these images of sort of, you know, um, fatter than life uh, images of, of fat as power. And then there's also the beauty. You know, you think of the, the voluptuous uh, fat sex kitten or the voluptuous fat um, male youth. Um, you know, if I, the, you know, for example, you think of the statue of David, you know, Leonardo da Vinci's David, but maybe, you know, a few hundred pounds heavier, who is no longer chiseled, but heaped. And that to a lot of men or women is very beautiful. Okay. It's Thank true. You. It's Thank true. You Thank that. you, Dan, because um, this is Matilda. Matilda's been around, you know, for a couple, quite a few years since we were doing goddesses. So she's very familiar about size acceptance and loving yourself and being big. And, sh and through the years that we've been doing goddesses here at uh, Queens Public Television, she's seen a lot of gentlemen come in who admire and a lot of big, women. Big, beautiful who, yes, women. Yes. And, and everyone, people who admire are big people. Oh, yes. Yeah. Including and the people. I, I, did you hear I that, Yeah. Including the people sorry, in the control ahead. room. I can't, I can't in the they, control they, room. They forget to push the buttons because they, <laughs> they're too busy looking at the models. <laughs> <laughs> Is that funny, Dan? Yeah, they do forget to, to yes, move the buttons. Do. They're like, they're busy. wow. So guess what? We probably converted a few. Uh, Can you imagine? Yes, yes, I'm sure. A lot of men that never even thought about it once they saw the show. Once you go fat, you never go back. Well, in my experience, that happens a lot, actually, because, you know, you're, you're not supposed to like it, right? If you're a woman or a man, you're not supposed to like, you know, a partner who's fat. And so you, you don't think about that. I, you know, I didn't even know I was gay until I was 20 because, you know, I, I wasn't attracted to thin guys. So I guess I'm not gay. And it took a while to put together that I liked a different kind of gay that was really, really fat. But it's all and society. The images that we see in all the magazine, most of them are thin. When we were growing yeah. up. I mean, now you may see some plus size people in magazines, but before you would never see that years ago. Yeah, you, you know, and I also compare it to, you know, the first time I had Thai food. You know, the first time I had Thai food, I hated it. And you know why? Because I thought it was the worst Chinese food I ever had. Because I didn't have, I didn't have an appreciation for something you, called Thai food. Um, did you not. say you had Thai food? Yeah. I don't uh -huh. know if you can hear me quite well. I, I, I'm making the analogy that the first time I had Thai food, I didn't like it because I thought it was bad Chinese food. I didn't have an, appre <laughs> I didn't have an appreciation 
for this thing called Thai food, which of course has nothing to do with Chinese food, mm -hmm. but needs to be appreciated on its own. And sometimes if you look at a person and you think, wow, that's a really, you know, that's a really terrible thin model. Well, yeah, it's a beautiful fat model. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's true. I mean, like, I don't know if you know Velvet. I mean, she modeled a few years back and mm -hmm. she was just absolutely gorgeous. You've heard of her, right? Yeah. And, and they loved her. She's big, beautiful. Yeah. She had to be at least 300 pounds. I'm not sure, but she's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. So you know what? Size doesn't mean anything. If you're beautiful and you're attracted to that, that's what it is. Yeah, and I think our definitions of what is proper and what is beautiful are becoming more malleable, are becoming, you know, we're allowed to express ourselves more. And, you know, we talk a lot about in the community about um, fat acceptance or even fat rights or fat oppression. And sometimes people think that, you know, oh, well, I guess fat people need fat rights because they're fat. No, fat rights or fat acceptance benefits everybody because when you are able to accept a wider range of what's beautiful, everybody benefits. All of a sudden, you know, it's the true, thin women and the okay. thin men don't feel so much pressure. Because it, it there are men everyone. in the closet. They won't admit to it. <coughs> I, I still see men in the closet. <coughs> I have friends. I'm sorry. We have lots of water here that we're drinking. Mm -hmm. There <laughs> are friends that I have that are still in the closet, and they love super-sized women. Yep. And, and but that's, yet, mm -hmm. they will not tell their friends. And I think that's so stupid because they're never going to be happy. Never. Well, you know, that is something I address head on in the book. Not in a, not in a bad way like you, you bad men. No, but, but why, more in a why is it, why do you think that men, let's say a drop dead gorgeous man, he is like really handsome, he's got a great job, he's a professional, mm -hmm. but he doesn't want anybody to know that. But yet he will go out with a super sized woman not a 200 pound woman but yet he'll still hide it and won't let his family and friends that he works with that he loves that yeah well you said it yourself he's in the closet because it's very similar to a guy who is very successful yes. but keeps his attraction for men in the closet it's something that he feels he needs to be ashamed of or something he feels he will be ridiculed for or something he feels he will be penalized for and it's like any closet. And it's I know a lot of men. What we think other men, people will think and what we think we will think of ourselves. Right. And, and, they, and these are people who've never gotten married because they're not going to be happy if they marry a, a thin person because they are totally attracted to, you know, <laughs> super size. Sure. And, and let me say something <laughs> else reading. about that. You know, it's, as you say, these men, you know, they think they're playing it safe, but they're never truly happy. And I also talk to their partners. You know, if nobody wants to be someone else's dirty little secret it's true That's not, it, no one I mean, you can't be that right and but what i tell a lot of fat men and women is it's not that he's a bad guy i say that you can't have a relationship with someone who is in the closet any closet whether it's a gay closet or a fat closet you can't have an authentic relationship but what i find i find with men me personally they will go out with BBWs, big beautiful women, mm -hmm. but that's only like quietly, or they might take her to dinner or something, but they'll never stick to one girl, never. They don't stick to one person. They just keep going around and around and around, and they'll never get married because of that problem being in a closet. It's because of their own, and again, and again I talk about how, you know, a lot of us in the round, I call this the round world, not just my book, but this, this, this place where fat people and their admirers interact. I call that the round world. And there's a lot of shame and guilt in the round world on both sides. I know, it's but, ridiculous. It really is. It's time yeah. to change. We're in 2016 right now. Matilda was looking at your book, yes, and she yes, has some Jen. questions. I do. I, I, you have a, a pen and ink drawing, and it's a very attractive woman. Here, I'm going to turn the book around. So, do you remember this one? This one. Yes, she has. She's wearing a a bustier with a beautiful mm. big hat and a see-through uh, cover-up. Oh, okay, well, uh, mm -hmm. I studied that at the Art Students League of New York. Some of our models were very developed, and it was su such a delight to to really paint. Uh, what happens is you have 
uh, when you have a heavy set person, you know, the, the, the folds, you have to learn how to do shadow and soften it. And it's, it's so different from painting a very thin person. It is different because there's very a lot different. of curves yes. in a big woman, and that's what they like about yes. being... And this, this looks beautiful. Did you get yes. to see No, that of one? course I did. I okay. have Dan's book. Okay. <laughs> he All even right. signed the book for yes, me. Yes, I did. I noticed. <laughs> okay. You know, you know what I like most about that picture you picked out? Yes. Is the model not only posed for that, yes. the model commissioned it, and it was her idea to be depicted that way. And I love the kind of empowerment that gives. Oh, yes. Oh, no, she's very confident. She's very certain of herself and, and mm -hmm. her figure. Absolutely. Oh, definitely. And she's pleased. And yet you also very inviting and very sexual. Mm-hmm. Right, and I think that all people, no matter what size they are, should feel that way, whether you're thin or big. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's what this is all about, size acceptance, accepting, accepting yourself and loving yourself on who you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's my real message, to be able to be who you've always been and to love what you've always loved. Exactly. Dan, what motivated you to, to write this particular book? Because I don't know you. Uh, so why did you go in this direction as opposed to, uh, is, first of all, is this your first Jeez. book or have you written yeah. other books? This is my first nonfiction book. I've written plays. I've done translations mm -hmm. uh, of uh, the children's books, okay. uh, and I've written articles. But this is my biggest nonfiction book, and I chose it as a topic because you know I kept. It actually came out of my seminars. I I, I lead seminars about uh, the relationships that we have and why they fail and why they succeed, and. People were coming up to me afterwards and saying, well, gosh, that was amazing. Do you have a book? Do you have yeah. videos? And I'm like, gosh, I guess I should have a book. Mm -hmm. And I also was in the position of, you know, I couldn't explain everything in a seminar or in a quick five-minute chat afterwards because sure. people have very complex questions. Mm -hmm. And so I got really interested in the idea of opening up a bigger conversation about what it is to experience a uh, a romantic desire for a fat partner and what it's like to be on the receiving end of being admired for something that you may not like about yourself as you know I was saying in the video and that that's also part of a larger conversation of any taboo because you know if you're fat or you're attracted to fat we live in a taboo conversation mm -hmm. you know can you say the word fat who can you say it to and that's like other taboos that are, we're dealing with in our that, society That's right so now. true. Even I felt a little hesitant, and really? I said, I used the word well developed. You were, you're because I was... No, fat is not a bad word. I, I, know. I have no problem saying fat. Mm -hmm. I teach my grandson when he says, oh, how grandma, look at that fat lady. I said, no, look at that big, beautiful lady. Mm -hmm. She's fat, but she's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I teach my grandson at the age of six years old. Mm -hmm so that he could understand what's going on. I have another on. question for Dan. Uh -huh. You know, I saw you, your Roland that you gave to Nancy. Did you ever consider um, doing another very brief Roland, perhaps three minutes, and you interview, a very brief interview, or almost modeling, you know, some of these people that you've come across? Have them... I, 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 I couldn't quite hear the question. I'm sorry. Okay. Have you considered doing another Roland? like the one you loaned uh, Nancy or gave Nancy, um, you are being interviewed, and I understand that. But in, in the future, to create another role in uh, perhaps three minutes of, um, to use your word, Nancy, fat women, very voluptuous, very sexy, and, and just, you know, kind of posing and being interviewed and answering your questions. And mm. that, you know, it, that would introduce no, yeah, the book. Yeah, of course, of course, yeah. yes. Uh, yes, that's that's really true. Yeah, and even a big guy, a big woman, yeah. and a big guy. That would be a perfect interview yes. for yes, us for TV. Yes. Yeah. Well, and thank you for saying that too. I, I appreciate the question. I think it's a great idea. And also, Nancy, I love that you know you included a big guy in that, because I think, you know, fat is a feminist issue. You can't. It just is. However, a lot of times the men get passed over in the discussion. There's a lot about, you know, well, for example, we say plus size dating. Well, you know, there are no plus sizes for men. We're just oh, we're the big and tall store. But so, I always include at Goddesses big, beautiful people and their admirers. When we used to have the dances, we haven't had dances for a little while. We always say big, beautiful women and big men and admirers. 
And I really appreciate that you do that because I, I would like to include more because men in this they conversation. Are, there are such yeah. teddy bear men, and there mm -hmm. are people who love them. Men and women love teddy bear men. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And they give, they, they really truly do. No, they, they're they so give, cuddly, yes. They give real strong hugs. You yes. Know? Yes, they do. They're wonderful. And Dan, you're such a wonderful guy to talk to. I mean, he's done a great job on the book. Thank you so much. I'm glad you're enjoying it. And, and I'm so happy when I saw you at the bash that you were so, I mean, you're so friendly with all the women and all the men. It's great. And you're very open about everything. That's so important. Well, thank you. I, and I think that's, that's, that is important for people. You know, you, you have to, like I said, you have to come out of the closet about this because yes. you know, people have their hang-ups about everything. But you find that, I mean, you know, you don't owe anybody the truth. You don't come out of the closet because you owe it to someone or because you should or because you shouldn't No, lie. not at all. I say... You come out of the closet. You come out of the closet because life goes better when you're living your life with integrity. It goes more smoothly and you feel more like a whole person. Well, you have to feel confident. If you, if you feel self-conscious, you know, of the pounds, then you don't feel confident with that extra weight. Well, that's why don't. we have, you know, this cable show, mm -hmm. so that we can let men and women feel comfortable and love themselves on who they are. It's very mm -hmm. important to encourage people to love yourself as you are. Mm -hmm. And if you don't love yourself as you are, then you can change what you don't like. It's an individual yeah. choice. And I also ask the question in my seminars, you know, what are the parts of our bodies? What is, you know, there's a parts of, there's parts of your body you like, and there's parts of your body you don't like. And then there's parts of your body that you may be actively at war with. Or there might be a part of your body that's not allowed to receive love because it's, you know, some part. And if someone admires that part, oh, my God. I don't know. There are men who available. love um, big legs and big arms. Like, when I meet fat admirers, oh, there are a separate men that just like big bottom girls. Absolutely. There are men who but I'll like tell you big arms. There are men that like big bellies. I just want to find somebody who likes it all. And you know what? <laughs> if I don't, I'm happy as the I am. Whole thing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and, and I think that that's what I hope to, to be moving people towards is this integration. So it's not an appreciation of parts and pieces. And, and believe me, I love the parts and pieces. But there's more to it. And, you know, sometimes when we objectify, we leave the, well, all the time. When we objectify, we don't see the person <laughs> behind all that who is even more beautiful. You know, as we're talking and you're talking, the phone is ringing off the hook. And people oh are my. wondering why we're not answering the phone. <laughs> it's, go it's off the hook. It's, it's, it's like nonstop. I could hear it from where I'm sitting. Right, Matilda? Yes. So yes. I don't know if we can take phone calls while you're talking. Oh, somebody's I don't know. calling. What was his name? Ja ja Javier is calling. Javier is so, calling. So, so let's see. I don't know. Can, do you want to speak to Javier or do you want to? Did we lose Dan? No, now, now it came off. Did we lose Dan? Dan is back on. Disconnected. Okay, I'm sorry, Dan. No problem. Yeah, so Javier? No, he's here. He's not disconnected. Oh, really? Yeah, it's, Dan is there. Uh, oh, Dan is disconnected. No, oh, no, Dan's back on. Yeah, he's but on. some the phone has been ringing and ringing and ringing, so I don't know if he's calling in to speak to you, or to one of the uh, to one of us. But the phones have not stopped. <laughs> it's a provocative topic. <laughs> <laughs> I just wish that we can take both, but we're having some technical problems. Um, so sure. perhaps they'll, they'll email you if they're interested in the book. I'm sure uh, that Joey's going to put up where to reach you. Sure, um, you can, there's the book, and also um, a quick way to reach me on the internet is uh, talkaboutfat.com. Talkaboutfat.com, okay. It'll lead you right to me. Oh, great, so they can reach you, and um, for Dan. Oliverio. Uh, absolutely. Dan Oliverio. Do you know, Dan, that my, my last name before I married was Olivero, and you are oh. Olivero. Interesting, right? It's Italian, yeah. Yes. Um, my last name was without the I. 
Okay, so Dan's book, The Round World, Life at the Intersection of Love, Sex, and Fat. I love I that. Lo I, love I just yes. love it. I love it. I love that, in that word, intersection. <laughs> I love it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's wonderful. And I'm so happy that I came across you. And we could go on for hours. Yes. Do you know Matilda does dreams? The phone does not stop. I don't know if we can pull in a caller, Dan, while, while you're on. I don't know. But you have less than four minutes, Nancy, so we got to keep so track Dan, of So, Dan, I want to thank you so much. Thank you, Nancy. I really appreciate uh, you. Oh, thank you so much. And again, um, what's your website again? Caller is on another. The website, uh, Dan. The website, you can reach me at talkaboutfat.com. Oh, talk uh, about fat. Oh, we name. have a yeah. caller on. Maybe they oh, can right. hear us. Hello, caller. Hello. Hi, good evening. <laughs> yes, how are you doing? I'm good. Who are we speaking to? It's Javier. Javier. Uh huh, Javier. What, what is it that you would like to know? Javier. Well, I think he got shy. All right. Oh, he's still on? Yeah, but he's not talking. Yes, yes. All right, Dan, thank you for calling in, Dan. And I love your book. And I hope to see you real soon. And I hope you sell a lot of books. Good luck. Thank you so much, Nancy. I appreciate it. Bye. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. So we still have somebody on the phone, but you yes. know what? He didn't speak. And, and I love all the questions that you had, and I'm glad that you were here. Mm -hmm because it was so hectic today trying to get on yeah. the show. There was so much, and you are so wonderful. Thank you. If there are any viewers out there who would like to have goddesses come on their show, you know, uh, that they have, if they have another show, if there's another producer, we can also go on your show, too. Mm -hmm. And your show is every third? Every, every third Friday of the month. And yes. uh, I cover many areas real fast because we have less than a minute. Yeah. So and I'm Goddesses. And I'm Matilda Diaz. <laughs> and I'm Nancy Goddess. And we're on every fourth Friday for 2016. And tomorrow we have a beach party. Or oh, actually, should I say a beach gathering? So bring your bathing suits tell or your shorts. Tell them where. And actually, it's going to be at 10 o'clock in the morning at Reese Park. Bye. So thank you <laughs> for watching Bay 2. Come to Bay 2 and see us soon.